for this particular problem, uh, we want to find the basis and the dimension of the solution space for the homogeneous system of linear equations. So it's a homogeneous system, and to find the basis in the dimension, it says of the solution space. The solution space for a homogeneous system is simply to solve the system AX equals zero. Now, in doing that, basically what you end up with uh, most times is an infinite uh, many solution set. And so based on what we talked about uh, in chapters uh, one uh, concerning uh, the three possibilities for the solution uh, for a system in terms of it being um, uh, either unique, no solution, or infinitely many solution, here for the case of infinitely many solution, that's exactly what we want to do. So what I did was I took this uh, this matrix, this system, put it in terms of a matrix, and then I entered it into my graphing calculator. Uh, there for a reduced uh, row echelon form. And in reducing that, I get this reduction. Now let's see if we can write that. That says simply x plus one third z is equal to zero. The second equation is y plus four thirds z is equal to zero. Now notice with that, if I look at the main diagonal, I have a zero at the, the z term. We have a zero here that denotes that that uh, variable would be the, the floating parameter. So that's z. So what I need to do here is to say let z equal to some parameter. Let's call it t. And t is any real number. You remember back in chapter one, we say that whenever you have uh, the reduction of the system and you have a row of, of all zeros like this, uh, whereby it's a square matrix, um, you will have a dependent system, um, literally a dependent system. That simply means uh, for us in terms of, of the numbers or the variables that X and Y would depend on, on Z. Um, and look at these two equations. Uh, they both have a Z in them, right? So with that being the case, I'm going to replace Z with T. And that first equation is X plus one third T is equal to zero. Now I solve for X, I get X is equal to negative one third T. Now the second equation is Y plus four thirds here, t equal to zero. This implies that y is equal to, yes, negative four over three times t. Now let's write the solution set. So here I have x, I have y, and I have z. So here x is negative one third, we can say times t if you will, y is negative four thirds times t, and then z is equal to t. Now I'm going to just write it, simplify it a little bit more. This is negative one third, this is negative four thirds, and this is one times t. And so here I only have one vector in the solution space. And so I count the vector, that's one, only one vector. So my dimension is one, and then the basis would be uh, this vector that we have determined. So we can say here, this then implies that a suitable basis is 
negative one third comma negative four thirds comma one or if you let t equal to three you get or negative one comma negative four comma three e either one is is um, uh, sufficient and equivalent um, for the equivalence uh, relationship for the answer the dimension here is only is one because we only have one vector now let's see how that plays out uh, for another problem that's a little bit more in depth than this one it, it asks the same question let's see so for this one find a basis for the uh, and the uh, dimension for the solution space of the homogeneous system again it's homogeneous because the terms here are all zero so it's still the same setup as before. I'm I'm solving here ax equal to zero. We're solving this system. Now on the graphing calculator, you can see the results over here on the right. Um, so I took this matrix and I put that in the calculator and I reduced. So let's write that out. This is x sub one plus four, x sub three plus three x sub four is equal to zero. The second equation is x sub two plus x sub three plus two thirds x sub four is equal to zero. There's only uh, two equations uh, that the system has been reduced to. Now, if you notice, for both of these equations, they both depend on an x sub 3 and x sub 4. So we can write x sub 1 in terms of x sub 3 and x sub 4. And we can write x sub 2 in terms of x sub 3 and x sub 4. Thus, the dimension would be 2 because here the system is dependent on, on two uh, independent uh, parameters that we can call s and t. And so... Um, Let's write that out. So here, let x sub 3 equal to s. And x sub 4 equal to t. So then I get x sub 1 is equal to negative 4s minus 3t. And x sub 2, look at the second equation, just solve for x sub 2 in terms of s and t. I get negative s minus 2 thirds t. So I'm going to write here the solution uh, set x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4. I just list the, the variables that I have. Uh, from the system. Now I'm going to write out exactly what they are. X sub 1 is negative 4s minus 3t. X sub 2 is negative s minus 2 thirds t. And then x sub 3 is s and x sub 4 is t. And so we keep writing. So here, I'm going to write the s's together. So this is negative 4s minus s. This is an s there, and that's a 0. And then plus, put the t's, negative 3t, negative 2 thirds t, No uh, t there for x sub 3, and then there's a t here. And then we just write it one more time. This is negative 4, negative 1, 1, 0 times s 
plus negative 3, negative 2 thirds, 0, and 1 times t. Again, we count the number of vectors that we have uh, in this basis, f2, right? And then the, the basis uh, would be negative 4, negative 1, 1, 0. You see it there. And then negative 3, negative 2 thirds, 0, and 1. You see it there. Now, now you could have said that if you let t equal to 3, this would be negative 9, negative 2, 0, and 3. That's equivalent, and that would work as well, too. So uh, hopefully that helps. And um, let me know if you have any other issues. <laughs> Thank you.